All right, we're here at 2024 Cherry Springs. This is James from Astro Creation. Hi, James. George. Oh, George, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's <start> over. <laughs> a lot of names. Oh, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so we, uh, we have a sea of SV Boney scopes behind us here. One of them's mine, two of them are his. And, and this one here is on loan from you, right, from SV Boney? Yep, uh, they sent it to me like a month ago for like test review purposes. And uh, this is 80 millimeter SV Boney. Um, F6 APO and uh, currently I'm like working with this setup with uh, not a flat like usually normally it comes with a 1x flattener mm -hmm. but I didn't have it at the moment so I'm uh, I installed 0.x reducer from the doublet and works pretty good and by the way although it's uh, like 0.x reducer so you can, can assume that it, we're gonna make the telescope faster to f4.8 but since the, tel uh, the reducer from uh, the Duplo telescope, the plate solving tells me that uh, it is f4.7 actually. Mm. Which is like s slightly, but mm -hmm. faster. <laughs> I know, uh, I know for, for this being a review scope and you know, you've just had it for a month, you've actually got a very nice looking setup and everything. I like the way you have your guide scope mounted very low, so your center of balance and everything is yeah. low. I know this mount is plenty to handle a rig like this, but just the same, you know, like with the old traditional types of mounts, we don't want to tax them as much as we can. And getting everything low, I like that. And you've got really good cable management going on here too. You want to brag about that? Whole thing? <laughs> Thanks. I mean, the cable management, uh, yeah, a lot of people, whoever stopped by uh, for the last couple of days, they're kind of telling me, hey, how good it is. But I always, I'm not happy with cable management. Although I try to make it perfect, as everybody, like most of us, would try to do it. But yeah, although it's a review scope, I wanted to or do like, cable management and uh, I don't know if it's okay but on my channel I have a like video where I kind of show up the whole process how I set everything up and yeah this thing like the guide scope on the left side and uh, at the moment the guide scope was on the same side as a focuser and I didn't want to like me be the telescope although it's a small scope but I didn't want to be disbalanced so yeah mm -hmm. I rotated the guide scope with, with this side this uh, focuser on this side and that's the good thing about cable management is that I, what I usually do like when I review stuff on my channel, if it's a camera, if it's a telescope, I just run it for like lots of hours of exposure time so that I have an idea on different objects how like a nebula would look like, how the bright star would look like, right? And then that's how it basically works. <laughs> then, yeah. Hey! Oh, we're getting accosted by a rocket here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two SV Boney 122 Apple triplets here. Um, I know. Mine, of course, is behind us, and then this is his. Now, and this is one you bought, right? This one that I bought uh, last year on the pre-sale when they would sell it, the telescope all together with the folk reducer. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically, like uh, the idea was, I'm kind of getting the telescope for a bit lower price and promised them to make a, my like review, post a review with the with the opinion about the scope. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've been having, I've had a telescope for like almost a year now, and uh, that's like 120. APO became one of my favorite scopes because I've done some big projects on this one. So for example, one of the projects was capturing more than 200 hours on the Triangulum Galaxy where mm. I like, revealed all these nebulae that lie in the galaxy and uh, I spent three months just constantly imaging the same target and it was a good image. And uh, yeah, kind of happy. Like right now the scope is with a 294 sensor, but I usually carry it with the APAC side sensor where the image scale is almost getting closer to one arc second, so it's also everything looks good. And uh, yeah, that's my like go to scope where that I mostly use every clear night yeah. when I'm back at home. And, and this, this thing's pretty well set up. I mean, you've got like you know, your brackets from Lowe's here, which you know, you got everything neatly laid out and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, you've even got a white one of these automatic flap open. What do these things call now? I mean, they call them like flat panels. Okay. So if I mean, if uh, there is a LED panel, so it's a flat panel. Uh, the same company they also released just covers. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, uh, the LED panels they kind of limited in size. I think the bigger one they make for like 10 inch, the, mm -hmm. the size of the panel itself, not for the 10 inch scope. Mm -hmm. But I think recently they released like some bigger size covers without flat, without LED panel. But okay. yeah, they also have just just this like. Covers. So if you have a bigger scope, that's something you might want to use. <laughs> if you now, do. normally you have a, what is it, a 2600? 2600 MC Pro, yeah. Okay. Normally I have this camera. This one is just another camera for review for test purposes. And I actually didn't get much light on this one yet, so I kind of don't have an opinion about the camera itself at the moment. Now, what do you think of the guide scope? The guide scope... Uh, the guide camera, I should guide say. Camera. There we go. So this one I've been using for like more than two years now. Mm -hmm. This is SV305. Uh, and uh, 
no issues whatsoever. I mean, what I like about this, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter at the moment, but some of the cameras, they have like a USB port and a guide port. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have a guide port, which we don't, we don't need it. We I don't know, who cares about a guide port anymore? <laughs> Nobody cares them. Yeah, we only we all need a guide cable to put it back in the box and forget about it. That's it. <laughs> I think Dylan O'Donnell from the Barn Bay Observatory, he even did a video where he took his and sum summarily, or summarily burned it with fireworks <laughs> he did he did yeah and by the way this uh like sv boni when they uh, sell this camera as a guide camera they usually sell it uh, together with sv 165 30 millimeter guide ca guide mm -hmm. scope and uh yeah i did a review on my channel a couple of years ago on this guide system and i uh, cut the, this fragment with uh, dylan, dylan. Mm -hmm. he said the cable on fire because uh, yeah, mm -hmm. i thought it was funny <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the yeah, yeah, yeah. He has definitely brought a lot of like humor to the observatory yeah. industry, I should say, which is a little bit needed, I would say. Now, um, um, I, know, I, I only have one critical thing to say about your rig, and that's that your wraps are black. I would say white. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I could see them at night better, you know. <laughs> well, I do mostly like remote image, remote imaging, so I don't care what color they are because I don't see the scope. I only see images that I can get from it. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I know I've had, I've had basically no issues with mine, other than like I accidentally f loosened my focuser once, so I had a little bit of sag in the system, but just tightened it up and then it was gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been very happy with my scope and everything. And I, I have, I also noticed you switched out to a lost mini plate. I did. For your, was that something you thought was kind of necessary, or was that just me being kind of anal about the stuff? I kind of didn't think about like being, I mean, doing it like necessary or no. I just wanted to go on the last mindy plate because, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the last mindy, the whole construction, like the rig itself, becomes more solid, mm -hmm. and it's better if like you have a bigger scope, you want to put it on the last mindy plate so that everything is uh, more durable and. Uh, Basically, your guiding is better and everything is better because on the like regular like dovetail plate, mm -hmm. it's I mean it's kind of okay if you don't overload it, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is something that just I like. Yeah. Plus, yeah. it's easier like when you travel, yeah. <laughs> it just stays much better than uh, dovetail plate. But yeah, I know uh, I, with gear like this, it's it's always a battle. It's like it's, uh, we want it to be stiffer and stronger, but at the same time, we don't like to add more weight if we can't. Okay, and I, I know like. If you've seen my, some of my videos, like I've done some some focuser tests and and shown that like you know even the tube itself, like the actual optical tube, can bend, you know, under stress, you know, which is interesting. I'm getting a phone call. It is her. Let me call it. Let me yeah, take it. <laughs> yeah. So I know obviously you're using like a little money PC here. You must be running Nina, right? Yeah, I uh, run. Uh like all my imaging sessions through Nina, like so it's a mini PC here on top. Mm -hmm. And Nina is just convenient. I mean, it does everything and especially it's good for me since I have like a flat panel and a rotator. So whenever I set up imaging session, mm -hmm. I just like, like when I plan my target, I set up the rotation and everything. And then um, like if I have a 2600 MC Pro camera, uh, although it's a color camera, I use a filter wheel. Mm -hmm. So I have a UV cut filter, a dual filter. And let's say I have like, we have a nights where the half of the night is dark night, and then we have a moon rising, mm -hmm. right? So I kind of switch filters in the middle of the night, and that's convenient for like when I take flats as well. So before switching the filter, I take flat frames, mm -hmm. then I switch filters, switch the rotate, and Nina does basically everything, so it's much easier, yeah? I don't know, how are you doing your processing these days? Uh, mostly I do Pixel Insight plus Photoshop, but sometimes, like in some cases, I use Astro Pixel processor for background extraction. Yeah. But mostly it's Pixinsight and Photoshop, yeah. Hey, well, thank you so much and for coming on my channel. Thank you, Ben. <laughs>